North Korea does pose a very serious challenge for uh, the Asian region as well as for the world because of its continued march on a, a nuclear weapons program. And uh, China certainly holds a lot of sway with North Korea. And I think it's critically important for the United States to continue and to deepen the discussion with China about how best to manage this North Korean challenge. But the North Korean issue is a very complicated and complex one, and it doesn't lend itself to simple solutions. There's not a simple military solution to it, given that North Korea has a tremendous amount of firepower, uh, artillery, that could rain down on Seoul if there was going to be some type of military action. So I am just uh, hoping that uh, Mr. Trump and his advisors have uh, spent the last uh, couple of months really learning and understanding what the, the challenge is, uh, what the implications are of certain policy courses. Uh, this is something that requires a very thoughtful and measured approach. President Trump says that uh, using the term radical Islamic terrorism will help the U.S. win the war on terror. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. I, a lot of people say that. When you refer to the terrorists as uh, you know, following radical is Islam, it legitimizes the terrorists in terms of that they're actually carrying out a legitimate tenet of the Islamic faith, and they're not. Do you think uh, that Donald Trump's proposed ban uh, on several Muslim-majority countries would make America safer? I think it's very important that uh, there be measures taken to uh, protect uh, countries from individuals who may be trying to enter the borders uh, for terrorist purposes. This, that proposed executive order, uh, really I think was um, too simplistic in, and misguided. Do you think it would be counterproductive? Well, I, I do, because uh, first of all, a lot of citizens from those countries who have very legitimate uh, reason to travel to the United States, family, personal, professional, educational, I think are really going to see this as reflecting a, a different approach and a different tone from the United States, which has prided itself over our 241 years of welcoming people from all walks of life in all countries. And to me, I think they're going to see it as profiling uh, specific nationalities. Um, U.S. intelligence is suggesting that WikiLeaks are you know, helping the Russians. Do you think Julian Assange is unwittingly being used by the Russians? <laughs> Well, he may be unwittingly being used by the Russians, but also I think he's wittingly advancing Russian interests and, and uh, making sure that their objectives and goals and agendas are being pursued. Maybe he is uh, naive enough or um, <clears throat> uninformed enough uh, that he is being uh, duped by the, the Russians, and, but uh, I think he is uh, well aware that he is a pawn in their hands. Why do you think Donald Trump's so well disposed to Vladimir Putin? You'd have to ask him. Um, but have you actually seen evidence that the Russians have been compromising material, for example, what the Russians call compromise on Trump, for example? <clears throat> uh, uh, there's an, there are active investigations ongoing right now about uh, Russian involvement in the last uh, presidential election. and. Uh, there are two investigations in the Congress as well as an FBI investigations, and, and so I'm going to leave to them to uh, make determinations about uh, what the Russians did or what they might have. But actually when uh, Trump says that only the fake news media thinks his team colluded with Russia, I mean the director of the FBI, James Comey, clearly hasn't ruled out. Clearly you're not ruling out either. These are ongoing investigations, and just like the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee that is involved in the investigation said, it would be premature at this time to make any determination or rule anything out. Now, the British Home Secretary uh, says that the government should be given access to WhatsApp and other end-to-end -end encryption services. Do you think she's right? I think there needs to be a way for the government to work with these companies, such as WhatsApp, so that the government can carry out its responsibilities to protect society and to carry out the rule of law. And when there are these very sophisticated technologies such as the unbreakable encryption, it really does impede the government's ability to protect its citizens. Now, in the lecture you're giving tomorrow, the Dimbleby lecture, you're saying very clearly that you're concerned about the competence of some politicians to enter positions of authority who don't have the skills for carrying out their solemn governmental responsibilities with competence, integrity and efficacy. Who are you thinking of? 
I, I can think of a lot of government leaders around the world who arrive in those positions without the, the needed experience, the, the needed um, knowledge uh, to carry out uh, these responsibilities in a very complicated world. You talk about though, a variety of people that you might, you know, the kinds of people that you might be talking about. And you said, you know, if this person came from, even in an unrelated celebrity inducing field. I mean, you're being coy, you're talking about Donald Trump, aren't you? I am expressing my views and concerns about um, how important these government positions and leadership positions are and how um, we as societies need to have confidence that the individuals who have such power and authority are up to the task. Was Donald Trump right to tweet his accusation that President Obama wiretapped him before the election? Was he right to say that? I, I guess a, a president can say whatever he wants, particularly one that, uh, that tweets. I think that there is a, a solemn obligation on the part of an individual such as the president to um, tweet or to message uh, information that is accurate, uh, that is um, um, that, that is measured and that is not uh, just a spontaneous or impulsive uh, number of words that they're trying to say. And I think that uh, there are some things that have been tweeted um, in, uh, coming out of Washington where the, the care uh, was not taken and that was, it was not, the individual who tweeted it was not mindful of uh, the importance that people attach to the words of a president. But Donald Trump would say that the real story that's going on, what's going on just now, is leaks for the intelligence community, not the team's alleged leaks, uh, uh, links with Russia. Is he right? Well, I think he certainly is right that these leaks are appalling. They need to stop. Any unauthorized disclosure of classified information and source of methods is something that needs to be addressed. One of uh, Donald Trump's first outings when he became president was to make a speech in front of the CIA memorial in which he talked about his disputed inauguration attendance figures rather than actually paying tribute to uh, the CIA agents who'd fallen in the course of duty. What went through your mind when you saw that? That wall of honour is, is hollow ground for the agency. I know many of the individuals who are represented on that wall with those stars. And so when I saw Mr. Trump up there talking about politics, uh, it really struck a nerve, and it was not just my nerve that was struck. Many of my colleagues, former and current employees of CIA, I think felt that that was something that uh, should not have taken place. And I felt I had to give voice to the, the concerns of agency officers, which I did. Because you criticised Donald Trump for comparing intel agencies to Nazi Germany, and I wonder how that was received by the intelligence community, not what you said, but what he said. Uh, the in intelligence professionals at CIA and other parts of the intelligence community take great pride in their work, and, and they don't do it for public acclamation or ticker tape parades. They do it silently, uh, and uh, most times their, their great work is never known. But when there is criticism and baseless criticism, and impugning the integrity, uh, the mission of intelligence officers. Yeah, intelligence officers take umbrage at that and uh, will continue to do so. But just going back to that whole uh, question about Barack Obama, the White House all but accused GCHQ of helping President uh, Obama wiretap Donald Trump. I mean, was that justified? Did it damage the Five Eyes Alliance? Uh, again, I, there are a lot of, lot of things that have been said and, and, and tweeted and whatever that uh, I just, I am mystified over as to why they were done. If at the end of these investigations into the leaks, it is found that it has been, there have been leaks by CIA officers themselves, they will undermine their own organization. They will undermine the organization that you serve for all these years, if that's found to be the case. Anybody who releases classified information, whether it be to a, a foreign intelligence service or to the media, to me, is carrying out a treasonous act against their country, and they should be held to account. And um, there have been instances uh, where CIA officers in the past, just like British intelligence officers in the past, 
have, um, have gone bad. The deep state. Uh, well, no, it's, these, are, these are individuals who have violated their oath of office. But you don't believe in the deep state? I do not, absolutely not. That's, that's ridiculous that there's a deep state that is trying to undermine either the credibility of the, the presidency or is trying to pursue other but policies. That's, but that's what Steve Bannon, that's what Donald Trump thinks. <sighs> Anybody who thinks that there is a deep state and that the CIA is part of it within the U.S. government uh, is delusional. John Byrne, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Kirsty.